talk about it. Welcome to the Real Truth and Power Live podcast. Um, been a while, but we are back. Wanted to show off my new Father's Day shirt. I am a proud black dad. And um, we got a powerful show today. I am very excited. So you know how we do. Let's start the show. You are now tuned in to Real Truth and Power, the show that uplifts the community with health, wealth, and knowledge of self. Here's your host, Everett Winchester. All right, we have a powerful, a powerful show today. We have a powerful sister. She is an entrepreneur. She has a black-owned beauty supply store. So you know how it is. Let me bring in my sister, Shantae Howard. Man, this is going to be a powerful interview. I know you guys are going to enjoy it. Hold on one second. Let me bring my sister in. All right, so first of all, I want to say peace and blessings to our sister from Virginia Beach. Um, please introduce yourself to the family and give them a little uh, description of your background. Okay, my name is Shantae Howard. I, am, I live in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Currently, I'm a small business owner. I am the owner of Palace Beauty Supplies. Um, I started Palace Beauty Supplies in 2019 after working 20 years in corporate America. I have a master's degree in business and marketing. I have a bachelor's degree in marketing and transportation and logistics. And I'm just ready to get out here and help serve our people to create better conditions. You know, that's why I feel God put me here and I'm, I'm thankful to be able to walk in my calling. Wow. Well, before I get into your business, because you have a powerful business, um, what I wanted you to do was, because you're in the beauty supply business, I wanted you to talk about the importance of black ownership in that business, um, because I, I do know we lack a lot of ownership in the beauty supply business. It's like we're consumers, but not owners. Yes, yes. We are. Con we, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of ownership in the black beauty industry. You know, I am one of four Black-owned beauty supply stores in the Tidewater area of Virginia. So that's including seven cities. There are only four Black-owned beauty supply stores in this area. However, Asian stores, Korean stores, you find them on just about every corner, especially in, um, you know, our ur urban communities. So why is it important? It's important because, you know, the, the beauty supply industry you know, it was created, you know, was given a start initially by Madam C.J. Walker. And so she really, you know, uh, created this industry for us. So what happened was, you know, there are trade policies that disproportionately gave benefits to Korean suppliers to be able to manufacture and distribute Black-owned beauty supplies at a very cheap price right mm. so in order to be competitive you have to be able to control price and they're able to control price and supply and we're the demand so we demand these products but we don't own it so what i wanted to do the goal of this business was to help other you know entrepreneurs potential entrepreneurs to open black owned beauty supply stores and reclaim the black beauty industry that madam cj walker laid out for us to control so that is my motivation every day, to reclaim yeah. the black beauty industry. Wow, that was powerful. That was powerful. Now, you being a black business owner in the beauty supply field um, and being probably one of the only ones that I know, um, talk about some of the obstacles you have to overcome and that you've had, like you have to overcome daily and that you've had to overcome to be successful. Okay, so when I first started this business, I reached out to some people that I knew were already operating within a beauty supply business, and I got some advice from them. I also reached out to my, the suppliers. I had everything that I needed in order to start the beauty supply industry. My credit score was perfect. You know, I had the capital. I had liquidated my 401k, and I started 
exit my business with, with my own seed capital. So I had the resources to start this business. I had the license. I got, you know, the retail license. And when I went to certain suppliers of hair suppliers that are in demand, they basically told me that in order for me to open up an account with them, I had to spend $30,000 as a per order. What? Wow. 30,000 per order. Yes, that's a tactic to deter, deter black owned businesses from entering into the market. It's called a barrier to entry. Barrier to entry and they charging like 30,000 to, that's crazy, that's crazy. Just to give you an example, the average minimum order is $350 for most of my suppliers. Wow, right. wow. Okay. So this is a very popular hair um, supply company that is Korean owned and they own a monopoly within the black hair care industry. And so it, it causes myself and other, other black owned beauty supply stores, our workaround is that we have to order from other black owned beauty supply stores that currently have accounts with this Korean supplier. Gotcha. What this means is our cost will be higher because we're not getting the lowest cost because we have to pay what they're being charged and most black owned beauty supply stores are not getting a lower price compared to the Korean stores. And also I got to pay for shipping twice. I have to pay for shipping for them to ship it to their store. And then I have to pay shipping from their store to my store. So that's why when you see black owned beauty supply stores or black businesses and their prices are slightly higher than their the other competitors that are non-black, that's because the prices, the cost that we pay in order to survive is higher. So we have to offset those costs and pass those costs on to our customers until we're able to work together and do what we call collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is one of the outcomes of unification. So once we unify, we can gather and support each other collectively. And if I could link up with, let's say, 20 Black-owned beauty supply stores and I have a high minimum of $30,000, we could all split that up together if we live in the same geographic area and don't have to pay shipping, right? right? So that's, those are some of the disadvantages. Korean stores, they could do it because they, you could find about 20 Korean stores in about a 15 mile radius. So they all can purchase from the supplier together, ship to one location and come and pick up their goods or just have someone come and get it, a courier come pick it up locally. So we have to, it's, it's just, so important that we one support black businesses, be it a black beauty supply store, black restaurant, black clothing store, because we have so many barriers against us. We have, and, and, and these are not made up barriers because I, I actually reached out to other black owned beauty supply stores to see if they had also suffered the same, what I'm calling discrimination, mm -hmm. and they have. So this is a very common problem. So what we're doing is we're venturing into a class action lawsuit. We're going to sue these companies, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah, we're going to sue these companies for discrimination. Um, and so I don't want to name them, but it's a very awesome. common practice. And so what we had to also appeal to, we had to appeal to the government. Now I'm going to tell you this is the second time that the black beauty supply stores had to appeal to the federal government for assistance. One of my mentors appealed to the Obama administration mm -hmm. to get assistance with this same issue. And basically they told us they couldn't do anything for us. So here I am years later trying to open up my business and be successful. And I'm still suffering from the same barrier. So had that issue, the trade issue, the discrimination between Korean um, suppliers and black owned beauty supply stores been resolved during the Obama administration, I wouldn't be having the problems that I'm having today. Wow. If you're just tuning in, I have my sister, Shantae Howard from Palace Beauty Supplies in Virginia, and we want to promote her. So please hit that like button and that share button and subscribe on the count of three, one, two, three, bam. Thank you so much. We want to get this information out to the people. Let me ask you a question um, that I've been wondering. We seem to dominate as far as consumers in this business. Um, why, how can we help get you guys all together 
to you know to to make this happen as to where we can start dominating the um dominating this field. Well, it begins locally. So locally, you know, so locally, identify your black beauty supply stores. Go to Google. Most of us do have Google sites. Go to Google, identify, identify black businesses. There are black directories in just about every state and city and make an intentional effort every day to support a black business every day. Like you plan your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. When you get up and you say, I have to go and get some nails. Let me find a black nail salon. I have to get some synthetic hair, some braiding hair, some weave. Let me find a black um, beauty supply store, right? So intentionally seek these black establishments because, you know, we have to realize, you know, black businesses don't have the advantages that immigrants have when they come to this company, country and open businesses, right? So black businesses always are operating at a deficit in terms of resources. So right now, if you can imagine, we're in a pandemic. So black businesses are really suffering, you know, right now. You know, so what we have to do is like every other race and nationality, non-black, they support each other. They don't have to, you know, I don't have to sell myself or they don't have to sell themselves to themselves. I have to sell myself to black people in order to get that support. And we got to change that behavior. Yeah. You know, we, we have to change it because just think about it. When, when, you need, when you're having a fundraiser, do you call those Korean beauty supply stores that you go to or the Chinese restaurant up the street or any other business that's non-black, usually you reach out to the people within your circle. That's and the right. people within your circle look like you. So why aren't you supporting these black-owned businesses when in fact, we're the ones that's gonna turn around and support our communities, not only by seeking out of social injustices and economic injustices, but also financially, we help. So that's the, that's the what's in it for me. You're actually invested in your future because when you think about it, when we get a call to action, you see, uh, NFL players coming out saying, I'm going to donate $1 million to this cause. You see actors coming out saying, I'm going to donate $50,000. Well, black businesses, we want to be able to donate in large numbers to these causes. But when we have to beg and plead for business support, and we're already paying high operating costs, you know, it's like a no brainer, you know. So mm -hmm. once we begin to change our behaviors, change our mindset first and trust each other, and don't expect more from black people than you expect for non-black people. That's number one. And then once we build that trust, we got to support each other. And then we can unify and build these businesses, right? Because we are the consumers. We fuel the global economy. So once we start to redirect our dollars back to ourselves, and demand justice financially, economically with that financial dollar, that financial power, then we'll get those solutions immediately. And it'll be long-term policy solutions. Wow, that was powerful. That was powerful. Um, I wanna just thank you first of all for just dropping that knowledge, that dropping the game. That was definitely powerful because we need to hear this. Um, let's talk about your business for a minute. Um, first of all, is there a, um, the name, is there something behind the name Palace Beauty Supplies? Yes, because we are kings and queens. Slavery was not the beginnings of our origin and our story. We come from very, very skilled, educated, you know, um, just empowered people. You know, so Palace, we're, we're kings and queens. So when a sister or brother walk into this, this beauty supply, I, I treat them like a king or a queen. They get treated with respect every time. I say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, you know, because I believe that I'm here to serve my people. And when they walk through the, through the door, just like you walk through the door of my home, I want you to feel at home. So yes, it's a palace. I haven't quite gotten it to look like a palace yet, <laughs> but you know, it will one day. But yeah, we need to start looking at ourselves as royalty because we are, you know, and once we start looking at ourselves from that perspective, I think we'll start treating each, our, each other better. Yes, I'm glad you answered it like that because I didn't know actually what it meant. I just know there's always a story behind something. And um, I figured just talking to you, you probably had a powerful story behind Palace. Um, let me ask you, what, what inspired you to start getting into the beauty supply field? What, 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 where, where'd that passion come from? Well, one day I was doing my normal, maybe monthly beauty supply run, and I went to a local store 
And I come in this store, I go there every day, or like maybe not every day, but maybe once or twice a month. They know me. Don't follow me around the store. I'm not here to steal. You know what I'm saying? I felt right. like, you know, they were just treating me. I don't like to be treated like I'm not welcome. I don't want to be treated like, you know, I'm a criminal because I'm not. You know, I'm here to shop. So give me the space to shop. And if I need help, I can find you. You know, so I'm not going to shop in any type of beauty establishment, any business that don't respect me as a person and don't respect, respect me as a customer to give me the space to enjoy my shopping experience. So right. I was going to open a business. It was either going to be a restaurant business or some type of retail business. And I've always been into hair and hair weave. I love hair and hair weave. So, you know, it's like a beauty supply store is something that we can, I can do. You know, there is a need for a black owned beauty supply store in this area. Um, and so I just went for it. This is our second family business. Our first family business is a construction company, a general contracting okay. company. So, you know, this is my you know, my, my venture, you know, and, and I just thank God for the opportunity. Well, I know you said family, so it seems like you are, if it hasn't come from your parents, you're instilling that entrepreneurship in your family. So that's powerful right there. As a teenage mom, when she had me, you know, um, my dad, I came from a single parent household. Um, I actually dropped out of high school when I was 17. And I had a baby by my high school sweetheart. We later ended up going getting married and he went to the army. You know, um, I worked my way. You know, I was a waitress at one time. I worked at fast food restaurants. And then one day I was like, man, I need to go back to school. Because right. working in these fast food restaurants, that's a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, get, you work really hard and don't get paid nothing. So exactly. I wanted to go back to school. And I, I went to the Ohio State University. And, um, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I got my bachelor's degree there. I worked in the insurance industry, the risk management industry for 20 years. And I, I, I retired early as, as a manager to start my own business. Wow. So um, before I talk about some of the supplies you do carry, I just want to make sure that all the people can get to you and, you know, so um, to support you. You do have an online store as well, so you don't, they don't have to be locally. They can order supplies online, correct? So you can Google my um, my business is Palace with a P, like Castle Beauty Supplies. Go to Google. My website is palacebeautysupplies.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, same name, Palace beauty supplies but if you go to my google link you'll have access to my website the address i'm located in a north mall shopping center of the lynn haven area of virginia beach um so yeah i mean the experience has been challenging but you know i i'm trailing I'm, i consider myself a, a trailblazer you know i want to make it easier for the next business owner that decides to open up a black owned um, business. So what I'm also doing is consulting up and coming small businesses. I don't get paid until they get paid. Okay. So, yeah. So if I help you to be, become successful, we're going to trust each other in this process. And when, once your business takes off and you start to generate revenue, then, you know, we have a contract contractual agreement for compensation, but we have to just trust each other first. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, let's talk about some of the um, items that you do sell so that people can, um, can order. Talk about some of the items you sell. Is it just for females, males? Go into that a little bit for me. Well, my store is like, a, I could, it's like a Sally's Beauty Supply. I sell hair bundles, Brazilian hair bundles. I sell braiding hair, synthetic hair. Um, we have natural oil products. Most of the products I have are manufactured by and, and are branded by well, you know, brands like Aunt Jackie's. I have uh, Main Choice. I have uh, Shea Moisture. You know, you name it. I have Cantu. All of these beauty supplies. I have men grooming supplies. I have hair dyes, relaxers. You know, I'm still building my inventory. But if our website, PalaceBeautySupplies.com, you can see our list of um, product offerings, and also on Facebook Marketplace. We have our products listed there as well. So um, drop that website for me. It's going to be on the screen, but I just want to make sure that people can get it, you know, especially if they're listening from our podcast and they don't see it visually. Yeah, it's palacebeautysupplies.com. It's palace with the P, beauty 
supplies.com. Okay. Um, now, before I let you go, because I, I just appreciate you, you've been dropping so much of knowledge, and uh, I want to just make sure we get your business um, promoted. Um, please, for anybody that's inspiring to be an entrepreneur or just want to try selling beauty products and stuff like that, drop some, um, what can I say, give some um, powerful advice for them um, to continue or to encourage them to start. things that I learned that I would have done differently. One, I probably would have um, hired an attorney to represent me to negotiate my lease. Um, I would have also um, probably reached out in, to Black-owned beauty supply stores and, and did like a mentorship in their store first, shadowed them for a while to understand the business, understand how to get the accounts, um, and then just make sure you have the capital. Save your money. You know, right now, if you're not spending your money on food, clothing, and shelter, and what I mean is clothing, just as necessities, then, you know, just put it in the bank, put it in your, in the, underneath your mattress, save it, right? And as you save that money, then you can leverage that to buy a product because the Koreans, they don't supply, they don't give us credit either. So you have to have cash, you have to have liquid, you have to have some type of credit. You may have to get a, a loan or something in order to get the supplies in. Um, you can open up a beauty supply store with a $20,000 seed investment. And, and that's what I want to help people do. You know, and I want to help them to open up a store, you know, open it up efficiently, learn from some of the mistakes that I made, and just be successful. It is so easy. It is really easy. I mean, you can literally open up a beauty supply store in your home. And I'm mm. going to help people do that as well. So what okay. I want to do is for those that are interested in opening up a beauty supply store, I will help you get those products so you can sell those. You can sell them out of your garage. You have couponers. They do it all the time. They have products that they accumulate and they sell it online. Same thing. What you can do is order directly from me. I'll send it to you. You can sell it online because there's enough for everybody. And we, the purpose is to reclaim the black hair care industry. So however means we do that, we're going to do it by any means necessary. Definitely. Yeah. So um, Palace Beauty Supplies, we have a powerful black sister. She owns a black owned company. So we got to stop playing and support. If someone wanted to just reach out to you, talk to you, how can they contact you through your website? Do you have an email there or a phone number that they can get, you, get at you with? Palace Beauty Supplies, you see my website, the phone number there, it actually goes to a cell phone so I can text you. Text message, messaging is the best way. That way I can send you links. What I do is, if, if, for those that are interested in starting a beauty supply store, I'll send you a one-page business plan. Fill out that one-page business plan and you can email that back to me at info, I-N-F-O, at palacebeautysupplies.com. You can always get, email me, but if you go to Google, Everything is there. You go there, you can click on my website, my email, you find my Facebook pages and that phone number. You can text me with any questions that you have and I try to respond within 24 to 48 hours. Wow. Well, I want to thank you again, Shante, for dropping some knowledge. I didn't even know you was going to drop knowledge like that, talking about suing um, the industry and everything. Man, that was just powerful. Um, any last words you want to give to the people before we let you go? and let me know how I can help. Awesome. Let's work together. Well, I want to thank you so much again, and that's Ms. Shante Howard from Palace Beauty Supplies. Thank you so much for um, giving the information to the people. Thank you. God bless you. Take care, brother. Same to you. All right, man. What a great interview with our sister, Shante Howard. If you need to watch the video again, you can check us out on Facebook, Real Truth and Power. Um, but also, you can check us out on YouTube at Real Truth and Power Live. Also, the Collect the Black People Movement. Check out that YouTube channel. It's going to be a lot of shows. I keep pumping it up, but the shows are coming. Um, so I want to definitely kick my sister another shout out. Please support her business, Palace Beauty Supplies. Check out the link. Please like and share so we can get the information out to the people. Um, we got a lot of powerful shows coming up. And also July 4th, Monument, Washington, D.C. Brother Mosiah Fit will be down there with the Black Wolves Movement. 
and they will be doing a human R B G flag, the red, black, and green flag on July 4th in DC at the Washington Monument, I believe. Of course, Real Truth and Power will be there and it's gonna be powerful. So again, thank you for supporting the show. Please, again, like and share. Let's get our sister information out to the people. And if you are a consumer, black person, please, black, support black stores, support black-owned businesses, and please support our sister in Virginia, Ms. Shante Harris. And um, we are out, man. I want to say whole tap to everybody. Peace and blessings. And again, please support our sister. We got to stop buying from other people and build ourselves up economically and um I just want to shout that powerful sister out again. She was dropping some powerful knowledge. And we are out of here, man. Um, thank you again. Peace and blessings. Let's talk about it.